Joyita and this is my channel Explore with Joyita. Today I am going to talk about volcanoes. We always think that volcanoes cause nothing but destruction. We also think what's the importance of volcanoes. But volcanoes may be devastating in the moment. But ultimately, Earth's life would not be the same if it existed at all without volcanoes. Well, let us know more about it. Let us start with some basics that will help us understand the volcanoes well. First, we will know about the different layers of the earth. First is the crust. Yeah, well, this crust is not the crust of a pizza, but this crust is the outermost layer of the earth. The crust is a solid hard layer made up of rocks. Second, the mantle. Under the crust is the mantle. It is a thick layer of rocks rich in iron and magnesium. Third is the core. Below the mantle is the core, the center of the earth. Liquid outer core is a mixture of iron and nickel. Solid inner core is made up of iron 80%, a small amount of nickel. It is the hottest part of the earth. The crust and a thin layer of the upper mantle together forms the lithosphere. The lithosphere is broken up into 17 major separate pieces that fit together like a bad jigsaw puzzle. A piece of the puzzle is called a tectonic plate. The plates are horribly placed with overlapping pieces, gaps, and a force to fit with each other even when they don't. Because the tectonic plates don't go well together, it creates earthquakes and volcanic activity when two plates collide, diverge, or slide past each other. Earthquakes can trigger volcanic eruptions through severe movement of tectonic plates. Similarly, volcanoes can trigger earthquakes through the movement of magma within a volcano. Therefore, one can expect of how are volcanoes and earthquakes interrelated. The term volcano refers to an opening in the earth's surface from which lava, gases, ash and rock fragments erupt. The word volcano comes from the little island of Volcano in the Mediterranean Sea of Sicily. Centuries ago, the people living in this area believed that Volcano was the chimney of the forge of Vulcan. The structure of a volcano grows with every eruption. Below the surface, magma builds up in underground reservoirs. Magma and other volcanic materials are channeled to the surface where they are expelled through a crack or hole. Now you may have a doubt that what's the difference between magma and lava? So let me explain you. Magma is used for molten rock that is underground and lava for molten rock that breaks through the earth's surface. There are different parts of a volcano. So I will be explaining you one by one. 1. The Magma Chamber The magma chamber is a hollow within the volcano where magma and gases accumulate. During an eruption, these volcanic materials move from the magma chamber towards the surface via a pipe-like passageway called a conduit. Some volcanoes have a single while others have a primary conduit with one or more additional conduits that branch off it. 2. The Vent a vent is an opening on the surface of a volcano that emits lava, gases, ash or other volcanic materials. Some volcanoes have multiple vents, but there is only one main vent or central vent. 3. The Crater 
At the top of the volcano, the central vent may be surrounded by a bowl-shaped depression called a crater. Craters form when explosive eruptions occur. Eruptions are more explosive when magma contains a lot of gases and the volcano forcefully expels a large quantity of ash, rock fragments along with those gases. 4. The slopes The slopes are the sides or flanks of a volcano that radiate from the main or central vein. Slopes vary in gradient depending on the intensity of the volcano's eruptions and the materials that are expelled. Explosive eruptions of gas, ash and solid rock create steep slopes. Slow flowing molten lava creates gradual slopes. Since magma is lighter than the solid rock around it, Magma rises and gets collected in magma chambers. Eventually, some of the magma pushes through vents and fissures to the earth's surface. And this is how volcanoes erupt. When volcanoes erupt, there are loud noises. The noise a volcanic eruption makes really depends on the density of lava. The harder it is, the louder the noise is, but it is also less dangerous. This is because only liquid lava can travel far and fast. However, if there are explosions, an eruption can be very dangerous. The volcano projects bombs of burning rock. Extremely fine ash can travel a long way around the earth and the eruption can last between a few minutes to several years. The volcano then calms down for a long time, sometimes for centuries. Others rumble for thousands of years like Stromboli in Italy, which has been spitting lava every day for about 3000 years. When lava comes into contact with air, it cools down and solidifies. What the volcano looks like depends on how quick the lava cools down. If it cools rapidly, domes will fall. If not, the lava can spread several miles. The landscape thus created can be extremely fascinating as in the giant's causeway in northern Iran where columns of basalt have formed in the shape of enormous steps. There are three ways volcanoes are formed. First, divergent boundaries. At a divergent boundary, tectonic plates move apart from one another. They never really separate because magma continuously moves up from the mantle into this boundary building new plate materials on both sides of the plate boundary. 2. Convergent Boundaries If two tectonic plates collide, they form a convergent plate boundary. Usually one of the converging plate will move beneath the other, a process known as subduction. The new magma rises and may erupt violently to form volcanoes, often building arcs of islands along the convergent boundary. 3. Hotspot A volcanic hotspot is an area in the mantle from which heat rises as a thermal plume from deep in the earth. High heat and lower pressure at the base of the lithosphere facilitates melting of the rock. This magma rises through cracks and erupts to form volcanoes. There are also three types of volcanoes. Number 1. Cinder Cones They are composed mainly of ash and dark volcanic rock called Scoria. A single conduit leads from the magma chamber to a central vent. 
Magma that erupts from a cinder cone has a high viscosity. Because of its thick consistency, the gas in the lava causes it to erupt forcefully and the cinder cone vent emits a powerful blast of gas-filled lava. The emissions harden quickly and break into small particles called cinders. The resulting structure is a volcano with steep sides rising no more than 1000 feet above the ground. Cinder cones have a flat top with a wide circular crater and are made of layers that form from each eruption. The individual layers vary in slope depending on the intensity of the eruptions that form them. Number 2. Stratovolcanoes Stratovolcanoes are also called composite volcanoes and are built of layers of volcanic debris that rise thousands of feet their bases. Eruptions from stratovolcanoes vary in the materials they expel. Layers may be composed of cool liquid lava, ash or solid debris which produces volcanoes with steep sides and a conical shape. Number 3. Shield Volcanoes Shield volcanoes are named for their shape. The flattened dome has gentle slopes that resemble the shape of a curved shield. In addition to a central vent, these volcanoes sometimes have multiple vents around the top of the dome and the upper portion of the slopes. As magma rises from the magma chamber, the conduit branches into the secondary passages. These passages lead to vents on the flanks. Shield volcano eruptions are primarily lava flows, which contributes to their gradual slopes. The lava cools slowly and spreads out over a wide area, producing slopes of only 5 to 10 degrees. Volcanoes can be active, dormant, or extinct. Active volcanoes means they erupt regularly. Dormant volcanoes means they have not erupted for many years. Although there is still some activity deep inside, they may be erupting in the future. Extinct volcanoes means they are no longer active and are not expected to erupt again. How severe a natural disaster is depends on the interactions we have as humans with our environment. A strong earthquake can be completely overlooked if it happens in the middle of land where hardly any people live in. Consequently, a similar earthquake in a densely populated metropolitan area can cause many deaths, injuries and destruction of property. The same goes for volcanic eruptions. If an underwater volcano erupts in the middle of the ocean, it would have little impact to humans living far inland. However, if the volcano had been dormant for a significant amount of time and the humans started populating the land close to the base of a volcano, it would be devastating should it ever erupt. Further indirect consequences of a volcanic eruption can have a greater impact than the eruption itself. For example, volcanic ash can induce climate change that have serious agricultural, economic and sociological impacts on the people's lives. However, over geologic time, volcanic eruptions and related processes have directly and indirectly benefited mankind as well. 
Volcanic materials ultimately break down and weather to form some of the most fertile soils on earth, cultivation of which has produced abundant food and fostered civilization. Most of the metallic minerals mined in the world such as copper, gold, silver, lead and zinc are associated with magmas found deep within the roots of extinct volcanoes. And do you know what? Volcanoes helped in the formation of lands, atmosphere and water as well. When the spinning molten mass slowed and cooled, the bubbling cauldron developed a solid surface layer. The hot material underneath continued to boil and bubble up to the surface. The surface scum layer moved, sometimes accumulating thicker layers and sometimes sinking back into the molten mass. Over time, however, the surface thickened into more permanent layers. The volcanic eruptions continued, but the first land had formed. As the Earth's mass accumulated, the less dense gases trapped in the Earth began to rise to the surface. Volcanic eruptions carried gases and water out from the Earth's interior. The atmosphere generated by those volcanoes consisted of water vapor, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrochloric acid, methane, ammonia, nitrogen, and sulfur gases. The increasingly thick atmosphere accumulated as the proto-Earth cooled. Eventually, the atmosphere reached its maximum capacity to hold water, and the rain started. The volcanoes kept erupting, the Earth kept cooling, and the rain kept coming down. Eventually, the water began to accumulate forming the first oceans. The first ocean contained fresh water. So these were some of the benefits of eruptions. We often see hot springs near volcanoes. Do you know why? I'll tell you the reason why. Water does not always move in an orderly way under the ground. When it boils, it spurts out of the earth in the form of jets which can be anywhere from 4 inches to 30 feet high. These jets are called geysers. Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park got its name because it spurts regularly every hour. Not all geysers are as punctual or so spectacular. Sometimes they are just a boiling puddle of mud. Some of these springs have beneficial effects for health. So thermal spas have been established nearby. You can also find hot springs near volcanoes under the sea. This is what makes the currents feel warm in those places. They can reach temperatures of more than 170 degrees Fahrenheit. These temperatures can literally melt our skin. Now you may be wondering, are there volcanoes under the sea? Yes, of course. Volcanoes are even more under the sea than on dry lands. So if you enjoy my video, don't forget to like my video. Also subscribe my channel and press the bell icon next to it. Bye bye, see you in the next video.